year over year inflation has come down. But if you talk about these things, I think you kind of sound uh, a little bit, uh, some people will hear you and they'll just say like, oh, well, that's not true. You know, the cost of groceries is still high for me or I haven't gotten a wage or rent is unaffordable for me. How, what do you think Biden or, or Democrats, I guess largely in the country should be doing to kind of take credit for some of their economic platform, which I think they need to do to set themselves apart from Republicans without just sounding like they're out of touch with the common man's financial struggles. Yeah, see, there's a, there's a principle in the art of war, which is, National this, is, oh, this is such a non-issue. Conservatives don't want to do that. Any of this. This, I think they don't. When, you, when, when, when the courts have looked at how conservatives have tried to do like voter ID and shit in the past, like I think in North Carolina, I'm pretty sure the phrase was surgically targets black voters to disenfranchise them from voting. So when they tried to disbar certain IDs on, that they used, when they tried to start down certain polling places they wanted to use, and when they tried to get rid of early voting that black people predominantly use, and when they sit here and, what, oh. Student what? IDs as well. What? A great strategic campaign book. Um, and it says you meet people in the orthodox and you lead them to the extraordinary. And you have to meet people where they are. And I think where Biden has gotten into trouble is saying, well, this is Bidenomics. Well, people don't feel like things are going really well. And then you just put your name on something that is giving you the, not the credit, the blame for how they're feeling. So I think you have to start out and, and this is an emotional, this is an emotional business. Like you have to meet people where they are emotionally and say, I know you're struggling. This is, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. I know what you're going through kind of, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys are too young to remember Bill Clinton, but he had like this, I feel your pain, um, kind of just aura about him. And so people really felt like he understood what they were going through. And we've got it, that's where it starts. And then you say, and look, because I know how you're feeling and I know what's happened in this country for the last 30 or 40 years, we have reindustrialized the country. And that's where you start bragging a little bit. In Inflation Reduction Act, trillion dollar commitment to clean energy. Um, you know, the infrastructure bill, bipartisan, the CHIPS Act, which here in Ohio, we're gonna benefit from the Intel manufacturing plant, which may end up being a hundred billion dollar investment they needed the, the seed money from the CHIPS Act to actually finally, after 40 years, reshore chip manufacturing in the United States. Those jobs are gonna pay $135,000 a year, like average. So meet them where they are and then brag and say, and this is why I've done this. And I know you're not feeling it, but we can't turn back. We gotta keep going. And, and we're gonna double down on the working people of this country and that kind of thing. But you, if you don't meet them where they are and just say, you, you start reading them, you know, uh, GDP numbers and, you know, economic statistics are screwed because uh, people don't want to hear numbers. They want to know, there's an old saying, guy taught me when I first ran for office, he says, people don't care what you know. They want to know that you care. And that's it. If they know you care, like for some reason, a lot of people think Donald Trump cares about him, which obviously he doesn't. But you see the level of loyalty that, that happens when, when they actually think you care about them. And I think that's where, you know, Biden, um, you know, was the misstep with the Bidenomics thing, which is why, why we got to get back to that emotional connection of we understand you're struggling and we're, here's what we're doing about it. What is your outlook on the country as far as this next election cycle goes? Um, you know, the Trump came in and he upended a lot of... Uh, a lot of norms you know there was the expectation that maybe after he gets into office he's going to change his ways we clearly see that didn't happen and it got progressively worse and he's kind of uh, fomented a lot of that kind of mentality uh, in his base uh, do you see that as something that even without a, a trump re-election something that goes away do we have someone to kind of bridge that divide and kind of reel us back into expecting better from our leaders i i hope so i hope so it may take some time. It may it may take him stepping away from the public stage, um, or getting called out in, in such obvious ways that he can't get elected. Um, and then maybe it will it will die down, and we can and then we can heal and rebuild. Um, that's the hope. Um, but I do you know not to get on a complete tangent here, but I actually think like underneath the poisonous political discourse that we have, and there's some exciting things happening in the country, you know, um, around green technologies and, you know, the reshoring. And, you know, I love some of the stuff um, like 
how we're healing vets with with MDMA and psilocybin, you know, how we're healing addicts with like cannabinoids and cannabis and things like that. How we regenerative agriculture is like starting to to get some um, momentum behind it. How doctors are healing um, patients using food as medicine to reverse chronic diseases and the awareness around how broken and corrupt our food system is. Like underneath the poisonous discourse, I think there are a lot of really cool things happening that if we could just like, just a snake sheds its skin, if we could just shed this shit that's been going on since like the Vietnam War, like we are, this country's ready to pop, you know? And um, that's what keeps me going is that there, you know, there, there's a lot of good things going on. And I think telling people that, you know, and then and, and giving them a path forward to, you know, to, to self-actualize and to, to be healthy and to have a good job and have a good quality of life and not stress out about their economic situation and how we can heal addictions and fentanyl and, you know, heroin and all of this stuff. Like, how do we, how do we heal? And then we got all these modalities that are out there, all, all these different ways of doing I got a group called We The People um, and I'm uh, basically highlighting all the stuff I just mentioned. Like this, no one's talking about all this stuff. It's really cool, and I mean, people get really excited about that kind of, that kind of thing. We could actually heal addiction and heal trauma and grow healthy food and actually be healthy. And you know, the, the union piece of like having a, having a higher wages and good health care and all that stuff. Anyway, getting people excited about it has got to be the the path forward. We got to go on an adventure together and and get the better somehow get to better um a big thing that really bothered me about the campaign uh the senate race in ohio uh, against uh, with jd vance specifically was the just lack of authenticity on any level to his character uh, whether it was him releasing the books talking about trump being heroin for america before then endorsing trump just a few years later the complete 180 it felt like, though, on the campaign, these things were quickly d just put under the couch and ignored. And all of that inauthenticity just faded away. And he was able to make the Trumpian performance, get on the stage, do the circus. And the truth of what he believed or whether he's being authentic or whether this is for money or whatever it is, all that washed away. And it just became who's putting on the biggest show. How do you make those types of facts matter again in the public conversation? Well, you got to put on a better show, you know, I mean, you got to You got to get people more excited um, about, you know, about what's happening and about, about, and about what you want to happen. Trump clearly was running a campaign on grievance and, you know, um, just to mention, you know, the Democratic Party brand, too, is not great in places like Ohio. You know, um, they, they see us as a party that's really out of touch. Um, and we can't continue to have that. Um, but I, and I also think, you know, we were we were up five points going into the in the Labor Day. And then we could not get any help from from Chuck Schumer or the Democrats in Ohio or in, in D.C. Um, and Mitch McConnell came in and, and gave J.D. Vance like 40 to 50 million dollars. And that's you know, we just could not keep our head above water at that point. Um, but our message was working. Like I said, you know, I talked to Schumer a couple of times. I was like, we need 10 million bucks, bro. And we're like, we'll put this guy to bed. I don't think Ohio wanted to vote for him. Um, but we, we didn't have the resources to, to put him away. And I think, you know, to me, I think having a, a working class candidate win a state like Ohio would have been a huge shift for the party and the image of the party to say, well, Ohio's got Sherry Brown and Tim Ryan. Like, well, like it must be a working class party again. Um, and so, you know, you, but you got to, like I said, you've got to emotionally connect to people and, and we've got to rehabilitate um, the Democratic Party brand. And I, I get, you know, I get people mad at me all the time because I'm critical of the party. Um, it's not because I don't like I don't love who's in it and I'm friends with a lot of these people, which makes it very uncomfortable. But the reality is, like, this guy's a freaking insurrectionist. Like, this guy is terrible. And, and his crew, like uh, Jim Jordan and Cruz and Holly, and these are bad guys. Like, they're terrible. They tried to overturn the democracy, and we barely beat them. So 
to me, like the a mature adult thing to do is to reflect and say, what are we doing wrong that we, we are neck and neck with like the insurrectionists who are trying to overthrow the country? Like we have to figure that out because we have a huge responsibility in making sure that, that we preserve the democracy, a woman's right to choose, you know, and all these other things that we're talking about. And, but you've got you've to have an emotional connection to, to the voters and, and have more energy, more enthusiasm, more excitement. You know, I, I think, you know, especially the presidential campaigns, uh, we try to do some of this with our campaign, like music is healing, it's exciting, people like it, you know, getting artists in that aren't Democrat, Republican, just in it for the good of the country. You know, we had Dave Matthews in, we had Jackson Brown in. Um, Taylor Swift wanted to come in, but I wouldn't let her. No, I'm not <laughs> joking. Uh, but, you know, having having that kind of energy around the campaign can help put on a better show than the one that that they're supposedly putting on, which my neighbors don't like at all. Last question I'll ask, and I'll we'll let you go back to your ch- uh, child's football game, uh, basketball game, sorry. Um, some Democrats I talk to, they count Ohio out. They say Ohio went red this time and this time and this time. We need our resources yeah. elsewhere. And you were complaining about this earlier. How do you convince Democrats, activists, and small, do- uh, small dollar donors that races in Ohio are worth it and that they're worth the effort and investment? So this is a, this is a, great, uh, it's a great question, and I got a great answer. Um, one, I, first, before I go on, I wanted to say thank you to all the young people who were uh, in Ohio and, and doing the work for us here, because that's, man, the grassroots effort is so powerful. Knocking on doors, eyeball to eyeball conversations, listening, learning, trying to understand each other, and getting our message out in that way is so much more effective than TV ads. So thank you for all of that. Like we've, we've got to build that out and keep it going because it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and the, I think the best, the best answer, um, I forgot the question. Uh, how do you convince people to invest in Ohio elections yeah. and winning okay. it back? So, so yeah, sorry. So we had two ballot initiatives on, and this gets to my point about the brand, not the democratic brand, not being good. So just take this as, as like, you know, evidence, two ballot initiatives in the fall, one on marijuana legalization, straight legalization, um, and one on choice. We won both of those by 57% of the vote. Okay. We had a union initiative um, 10 years ago. They were trying to get rid of uh, collective bargaining in Ohio, public sector, police, fire, teachers, the whole nine yards. We put a, they passed it through the legislature, we put it on a ballot initiative. We won that with 63% of the vote, pro-union. So you take those three issues in the last 10 years, this, is, this would be perceived as being a democratic state, right? A progressive state, a liberal state, however you want to say it. So you put a D by any of those and we lose, you know? And because and, I was pro-choice, pro for marijuana, pro-union, you know, pro that, but I had a D by the name and that, that hurts you here. So Ohio is not, a, you know, gone. It's not off the board. It's not Alabama. It is a swing state, but you need the right candidate with the right message talking about the right issues and the right commitment from the National Party to be able to get it done. But that those those ballot initiatives are showing you where the state is. And the state is, I think, a little bit center left, um, very conservative, a lot of rural areas, a lot of hunters, fishermen, um, you know, but it's it's not. Uh, um, it's not a it's not a deep red state as as some would you know some would guess and we just gotta you know gotta get the right candidates with the right message and the right monetary commitment we can do it awesome uh mr ryan thank you for for joining us uh, real quick before you go um i uh you wouldn't remember this because you can't see me and it was a long time ago and you met a lot of people but you came to a howland uh, speech and debate match about 20 years ago about 2004 2005 I walked up to you in the cafeteria and tried to debate you on Iraq. 
I was a little conservative back then. So we, a lot has changed in the years, and now I'm completely on the other side. I never thought that would happen. <laughs> so it's, uh, oh it's great God. to get to talk to you again. That, did you go, you went to Howland High School? No, no, I went to uh, Niles. Oh, you went to Niles, okay. Yeah, how about that? So one for the good guys, right? We got you, we got you on, the right, on the right team. Yeah, see, people can be moved, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Tim. We appreciate it. We'll let you I back there, kid, and we'll get Thank back to our you. children over appreciate here. You. Appreciate you guys. Thanks again. Have a good one. Welcome back, everyone. I am here with two new lovely guests. I'm Dylan Burns, war journalist and Twitch streamer. And I'm also here with legislative correspondent on Twitch and YouTube, IRI, and we have, who are you? Uh, I'm Irrelevant uh, on Twitch and Kick, uh, political commentator and uh, drama streamer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wick TV, I stream on YouTube, Twitch, and Kick. Uh, I host debates, do a wide variety of content. Um, I've had people, uh, no opinion came on my show the other day. It was a great conversation. Um, yeah, that's what I do. So, Irrelevant, any good drama from this yet? Did anybody, you know, do the dirty? <laughs> I mean, there is a, it seemed like one of the canvassers possibly got into a, uh, in a car accident. Yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. that's yeah. the best yeah. we yeah. got? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, I think it was a little, it was just a little something, but uh, there's no, no, nothing significant, no crazy drama or anything like that. Gotcha. What, what can we do to change that? <laughs> uh, apparently. Uh, all you gotta do is you gotta just have these people stay out for a couple more days and then keep them inside of these houses <laughs> locked away. I was in uh, my room. I have uh, a roommate now that showed up. I'm in a shared space, like this couch inside of a shared space, and there's another couch or another bed that just pulled out underneath it. And and he, got, like, uh, he slept next to a man last night. He didn't even know his name. I didn't know his name. <laughs> but LGBT it was a icon. <laughs> Of course, yeah, it's me coming out on that. Did you go out and knock doors too? Yeah, I did. How was that? It was a lot of fun. Okay, I really now, enjoyed it. Fun fact, Relly and I knocked doors together when he came out in Georgia for the first time in 2021. Yeah. And now, were you leading? Were you guiding a little bit, passing down that knowledge to the next uh, person? Actually, I was with uh, a, one of the leads here, a very experienced individual, okay. who has given me a bunch of tips and pointers. You were really chill, they were really chill, but this person, oh man, they were giving me the, the, pro the rundown. Tips? Yeah, the tech. The what are tech. the pro tips, anything? It was just like, you know, how to come off as like, more, a little bit more personal, a little relax a bit, because you know, I got, I'm pretty anxious about it. It's, <laughs> I know other people are too. It's, I, you know, I get it's nervous. It's the easiest too. thing to do. Do yeah, you, you, do you think collecting so many different internet needs at a single location has undercut our ability to have any social awareness when interacting with voters? Of course. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to go about it. These people are, there's knocking on the door. It's probably the most social interaction a lot of these people have had. Mm -hmm. It makes months. for a memorable experience. So when you have internet nerds knocking on your door, you're going to remember that. You okay? are. It's going to linger <laughs> with you. The smell, at who least. Who did that nerd okay. tell me who to vote for? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What, what you was your, remember. you were knocking doors too? Yeah. How me was your and, experience? Uh, me and Josiah from Pondering Politics went mm -hmm. out together. Um, we, I think we must have knocked 100 doors at least. We nice. spent a lot of time doing it. A couple hours. Um, yeah. yeah, the people were great. Uh, yeah, we had a, a lot of discussions about what was on people's minds. Like, what did the average voter, like the, the man about town, if you will, mm. what was on their minds when it came to the election coming up? And uh, yeah, it was, did, it was did anybody great. stick out particular? Do you have any particular? Um, actually, uh, there was a theme, right? Mm. Um, a lot of people were, were just very concerned about democracy. I right? heard that too. Yeah. Um, and people are worried, right? People are worried about the integrity of our system, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're worried about the people who doubt it, who the people who are trying to tear it down and destroy it. So that is something that, again, it surprised me. I thought we were gonna hear economy. I thought we were gonna hear immigration. Didn't hear that once. Democracy. Democracy was hmm. the number one thing. Did you hear yeah, certain issues so or anything? Yeah, but the responses I got were more local. It was literally just like, hey, there's <laughs> potholes yeah. in the road that they huh? promised to fix for like a while and they're not fixed. Yeah. Like that was the You got parking big, too, right? Yeah, parking. Yeah. There was like people that were concerned with like the very immediate problems, like just parking to be able to get to the house. 
like having proper sidewalks, cr crosswalks, sorry. So that way people could get across the street with their dogs and animals and stuff like that. Yeah. That was like a lot of people's big concern. It's interesting, they stuff. it's interesting to me how they open up. Like, why would they tell you this, you know? Like, what's the point? They think you're gonna fix it, but it just shows you that there's a need for like a sounding board for people to be able to- That's what it felt like. Talk about their problems, yeah. Yeah, like, it felt the like they have. people were coming out and they're like, oh man, finally somebody asked me what I'm yeah. my problems are. Hey, look, <laughs> Listen, I'll cook with you. I got a list. Hold on. Let yeah. me go get it real quick. Yeah. There was some people that were like that. They felt very, very, like, energized to have a conversation about some of the problems they could vent off to us. So it was cool. I got, I got a question. One of the biggest issues that I've heard from a lot of the new canvassers is these people don't know the Progressive Victory. These people don't know the person on their porch. Mm -hmm. And once you start, like... Hi, my name's so and so. Tell me what you care about. Tell me about your politics. I register to vote. People get people are private. People are, feel weird about it because they don't know who you are. How how do you make somebody feel comfortable sharing that type of information? Me personally, I'm I'm just uh, I don't know. It's a great question. I mean. I mean, look at this guy's easy going demeanor. I mean, I, I, mean, mean, I feel like I would just talk to him about it. First true. of all, I want to open up about my yeah. secrets right now. Well, okay. look, yeah. first of all, it's kind of like the pro tip step back, smile, yeah. looking at the door. Yeah. Like, you know, I carry the clipboard, so they think I'm more professional because yeah. I feel like utility guys carry around a clipboard. I'm not just some guy with my hands in my pockets. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just about being um, uh, looking professional, but also being positive, smiling. But. I think when I talk to people at the door, I'm like, listen, how you doing, man? We're just out here making sure people are getting registered to vote. We've got big election coming up and they can see like the passion, you know? And when I talk to the other canvassers, cause I love going up to all these newer canvassers too. And so many of these people are like first time canvassing. And um, for them, they're just excited to share that. And I think people can sense that excitement when you knock on their door, you're not there like, how you doing today, sir? I'm here to collect signature. You know, you mm -hmm. not that vibe, so. Yeah, a smile goes a long way. I mm -hmm. think also leading with the voter registration, I think is really good, because who gets angry at somebody getting the public registered to vote? Even if you're not registered to vote, if you hear that, it's like, oh, this is a public service of some sort. Right. Mm -hmm. They, they get to see you're not there to sell them something like you're genuinely here because you care about something. I don't know. Do you guys get that vibe? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They want to, as Irrelevant said, people want to talk to you, right? And, and if you center them, right? Uh, again, me and Josiah were going around, uh, kept it simple, kept it short. Hey, would you like to be, are you registered to vote? Would you like to be, you need to update it? Oh, no? Okay. One last question. What's your top, uh, what's your top issue this election? Mm -hmm. And people will share, right? Yeah, I, I felt the same way, but there was a lot of people opening up. I had a person that we talked to that said, if uh, Trump gets elected, they're going to move to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, said. they were like, yeah, Iceland, that's the spot. Any, any particular reason Iceland specifically? Uh, they were like, I don't, they said a place without a conservative leader and they wanted Iceland because they liked the snow with the, the like hot springs or something and stuff like that. Yeah, like, they, like, they had it planned out. Yeah, they, they, were, they were scouting spots. They, they looked were scouting it up on, spots. They were hitting so. up Zillow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think, I think we're gonna keep bringing people in. So, yeah. Relly, we're gonna swap you real quick. Right. We'll bring you back up. Hi, Relly. What is up, party people? Talking about the glory of Donald J. Trump, our uh, man, our savior, our leader, our hero. Are you, our a, are you a big Trump fan, actually? You know, I like Trump. Wait, oh. introduce yourself wow. real quick, just in case people don't Hello. know. Hello, my name is Lauren De Laguna, and I'm on YouTube and X, and I like to fight people on Twitter. Paste. Okay, hold on. Wick has a big debate coming up tonight. Ooh, Wick, fun. do you want to preview this real quick? Because I know sure. Lauren wants to fight you a little bit on this. I wanted to physically fight you. But wait, you let physically I'm, fight? I'm, I'm down. In I mean, private. I told you that in private. I can't believe I'll, you're just like airing out my dirty laundry. Hey, look, oh, well, if you guys want to fight, go well, ahead. That's well, cool. Well, let, let me, let me, uh, let me. Uh, <laughs> Tell them about the debate yeah, tell first. The, tell the debate okay. first. Before so you we guys can get fight. to the fisticuffs okay, later. Okay. okay. The fisticuffs. So tonight, um, at about 7:30, we're going to have Ian Crossland from uh, Ooh, Tim Pool, right? And my boyfriend. Yeah. 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 Is that okay, true? Well, we dated for three days. It was it was fun. Go ahead. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but uh, Destiny is actually going to be talking to him. We're going to talk about uh, can we trust the electoral system in America? Mm. Has it failed us as mm. voters? Um, it's an interesting topic. I think there's a lot of discussion around that. It's Especially around the 2020 election, and it's worth discussing. It's worth talking about. What about you? Do you think it's failed us? Um, has the election electoral system failed us? Is that yes. your has question? A, has can we trust our votes? 
Currently, I don't believe our elections are as secure as they could possibly be. I think the things that would create a secure election um, are things that conservatives have been fighting for and something. As? So like single day voting, no mass mail out ballots, um, voter ID, um, having a end time for like, so like a strict start and end time, having it for the open polls, having a time in which all the ballots will be counted by, having like, if you have- mm -hmm. But doesn't, so I've heard this argument several times and it seems to me like you're trying to fix a problem that doesn't exist. We know that the uh, fraud in our system, in our electoral system, currently is very, very low. It's yeah, insignificant. How do you know that? How do I know that? We've done data. We've looked at the amounts of people who have been charged for Get fraud them, and things like that. Right, so just, Get because, just because fraud hasn't necessarily been found or prosecuted, <laughs> and I, I would- Secret fraud, hidden? Well, Get all with. fraud is attempted to be secret. People don't <laughs> typically be like, hey guys, I committed fraud. It was awesome, let me make a YouTube video about it. Now, sometimes they do, but then they usually get caught. Yeah, I, and then there's people who talk about how dumb they were for talking about the fraud. <laughs> so yeah, typically fraud is secret. Well, can I, can I ask you a question? But no. how do you test? Okay, never Sorry. mind. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. But and, if, if then how do you know that there's an issue of mass fraud or that it needs to be addressed if you can't get the data on it because the data that is collected isn't trustable we by just, your standards, but also you can't collect it because they're not telling you. We just know from first of all we've ha we have done studies on previous elections and on um, elections in other countries, and we know like our. Uh, Three letter agencies have created a, like a list of things to do to create the most secure possible election. As looking at other countries and seeing elections that have been uh, well, like fraudulent well, or stolen. I understand, and but those are what, other when countries. When the list of things that they have said, no, it, it, in totality, like it's just about election security and the things that you can do to make the election the, the most secure are the things that the conservatives are fighting for: voter ID, one day voting, no mass Look. mail out. Well, we could, the, the most secure election is one that doesn't happen. There's no fraud if you don't. So obviously, right, we can well, make it more secure, election, but there will be. Technically be the it, dude, this, this debate sounds epic. We're oh. going to have to wait for, fair enough, for fair next enough, round. Yeah. we got to bring somebody else in. Wick, okay. thank you for thank previewing you. it. Thank, thank you for you. sharing stuff with us. Of course. Oh, wait. I'll be saying. Give the mic to Stephen. Oh, okay. Oh. Wick can I'm just, stay. I'm eye candy now. we got a brand new content creator coming on, guys. New guy. He's a little shy. Actually, I want Stephen in between. Oh. Oh. Okay. okay. We're getting manhandled. Wow. I would put it on the other side because he's on the other side. Because. Hi guys, what's up? Welcome, hey. Stephen. <laughs> Hello. He's telling us about Trump and how he's cool. Cool. So, what did you think about that exchange right there? Who won? It's okay. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Our elections are probably pretty secure. I know that bothers conservatives, but. Get wrecked. Take that well, out. Well, as long as this work says it. True. <laughs> Damn. You're not bringing that energy you have for Wick right now to him. Sorry, his little, like, this little dwarf says it? Like, what the energy? Oh. Like, what, what kind of insults you all be throwing? You gonna take that? I think the problem, when it comes to voter stuff, I think the problem is both sides lie. I think the Democrats lie a little bit, but I think conservatives lie a lot. <laughs> I think if you wanted to have a secure election, I think that if a conservative would have put forth a measure where you're offering to send a free identification card to every single person in the I, state and then have that, at, what? I said, I think- You might lot, say fine, no, no, but that- No, there's a lot but, of conservatives that if you're willing to give, like, okay, if we're gonna have, require voter ID, then a lot of conservatives would be like, okay, fine, then the Democrats make very good point that we should make IDs accessible, easily accessible and free. Sure. If we're going to Historically though, I don't know if conservatives actually care about that. I think they just don't want like certain people, like black people and poor people to vote. That's just yeah. not true. Especially, well, I mean, like, especially when Trump is running for election, we want as many black people out You there absolutely as do not oh, want as many black people. <laughs> not every single black person. Black people love Trump. Yeah, they're not all the one guy on Twitter that raps about Trump. I'm sorry, but the average oh, black Trump person is probably, is yeah. If you like it Look at South Carolina. Keep How do you think that Trump would do in South rock. Carolina? We saw the, um, we saw the, what's it called, the primaries, mm -hmm. uh, and Biden got 96% of the vote. Everyone was saying, oh, black people aren't excited to vote for Biden. That just doesn't seem to be true. We seem to see, uh, again, high voter turnout and high, um, they want to vote, right? 96%, that's a lot. That's a huge amount. Are you doing, so you're judging it off uh, 2024 that primaries one, and not 2020? That is one data point, but that's not the only data point we got. <laughs> and Again, 2020 we Trump the, election Let's results. look at the historical okay. precedent I think of we how should. black people in America have voted. Yes, I think, absolutely think we should because yeah? we could see that 
the dramatic trend upward starting in 2016 and 2020 specifically because Trump ran black people like Trump. Can, Look, if wait, Ron DeSantis won the Republican primaries, I don't think that we would, I would be like, okay, uh, maybe I would prefer if, um, like, you know, then, then black well, people might not be as excited to vote for away, Trump. Right? But people, you only black, want black people to vote if they vote for who you think you well, want. Well, I only want vote. anyone to vote, like any race. I don't, it's not like particular towards blacks or, but However, like if it was like Asians, like and make, if Asians were all gonna like vote for to Biden, then I wouldn't want to extend the vote to everyone regardless of how they vote because I believe in democracy. And that's the difference between you and me. I believe in democracy. You believe in the power. In power. Don't let them say that to I believe difference. in democracy. I, I and I don't think that, so like for instance in Australia, they require everybody to vote. That is really I'm forcing American, everybody to vote. I don't vote. care what Australia does. No, no, you're not hearing me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 oh, it's just about. <laughs> God, hold on, can you take a moment to appreciate how much you got destroyed there? It's not just yeah. about. Oh my God. It's not just about like, the <laughs> most people <laughs> voting. It's not just about having the maximum people <laughs> voting. It's about having the people who care about the elections, who are informed about the in issues, voting. And we would like well, the maximum amount of people to be informed and to, and want to vote. However, uh, it's not just getting as many people out there to vote, especially if they're completely in. I don't want to skip and just fist fight. I don't want to. Yeah, bring it. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to pile on. But is there? I don't want to pile on at all. But is there any uh, concern that if you uh, put all these measures in place, like single day voting, that therefore the voter, the amount of people that are voting is going to go down, and then you're not going to have a representative voter sample? For the, for the population, then certain groups of people, people who work on election day or people who couldn't make it out, who, who would have voted if they could have mailed it in, they can't vote. Yeah, so I would want, if we're gonna be doing all of these things that conservatives want, if for me, if we're gonna be doing all the things that conservatives want to make this election as secure as possible, I think the conservatives are gonna have to come the other way and make it as easy as possible for people to vote. How do you do that with single, wait, but how could you? They, well, for instance, like making it a national holiday Day on election day, that's something Democrats Let's typically do that first. want. Let's do that making first. free. Show good faith. If, you, yeah. if that is how you want to do it, if we can make a, uh, the voting day a uh, National this is oh, this is such a non-issue. Conservatives don't want to do that. Any of this, this. I think they don't. When you look, when, when, when the courts have looked at how conservatives have tried to do like voter ID and shit in the past, like I think in North Carolina, I'm pretty sure the phrase was surgically targets black voters to disenfranchise them from voting. So when they tried to disbar certain IDs that they use, when they tried to shut down certain polling places they wanted to use, and when they tried to get rid of early voting that black people predominantly use, and when they sit here and what? Oh, student what? IDs as well. What? I'm so Sorry, the, he keeps he flipped me off for like ten minutes. I don't know why he's just screaming. At me. I'm just kidding. No, um, no, no. I'm just kidding. The um, yeah, I, I just I don't think conservatives have any interest in increasing the amount of voter people. Like, look at all the the um, crying out against like the mail out no request ballots or whatever for mail in voting. Like, why, why, why so upset? About the mail-in voting because it's not I, as secure as this in-person voting in which you can actually secure look at someone. Why, why have conservatives who have disproportionately this. enjoyed? Why have conservatives who have disproportionately enjoyed mail-in ballots because of like military voting and everything overseas for years never complained no about the security no of mail-in ballots? For why is it that so many of the state statutes that were charged with being corrupt and unfair passed by Republican legislatures so and never and nobody ever ideas. changed them before the election? You're conflating ideas. That's so right. Fine. Tell her. So <laughs> for instance, if mass mail-out voting is. Very very different than the military absentee ballots, which is like, so it's a completely, so you're trying to conflate those ideas because conservatives are typically represent the military and are gonna be voting absentee ballot, but the way that the 2020 election was held was completely unique, and the vast majority of ma mail-in ballots from that election were not military. But people, but, but, but why is it that 12 states that used the mail-out ballots with no, the no request mail-out ballots, Trump won anyway? Like the idea that these are like historically insecure. There's no data for it. He Trump won states that use these, so there's no the reason. Election. To, what? He didn't win that election. No. Okay. But what? I, so? But he didn't win the states he needed to. <laughs> but I mean, who cares? I mean, it's not like Trump doesn't need the popular vote to win. Anyway. He lost the popular vote against Hillary by what? Three million votes? Five million votes? Four million votes? But he he won that election. He did win, and he didn't win against Biden. But okay. what's the point? Because I, I, I think that. Remember, gang, this is a preview for tonight. Yes. Twenty twenty was, was significantly less it was, secure. No, than it wasn't. 2016. It was officials under a Trump the, administration yeah, that said COVID. this is the most secure election we've ever had. Wait, let's Trump how, official like, said That's actually this. why oh, I know that they said it, but the fact that they said it does not make that true. Where's and the proof actually, that it's not true? Oh, okay, okay, come on, chill, so, chill. We don't want it one versus a hundred here. Let's let we got a whole bunch of one. Conservative. We love her, though. We love her. How many? We love her. A gangbang of twenty one featuring Jasmine.
far. She's Only very one special. bitch gets fucked. <laughs> right, if, if Republicans were to actually come forward, if Republicans were to come forward saying we want to make this a national holiday, we want to um, issue a voter ID to everybody in the state, I think we're, I think Democrats have a really hard time fighting against that. I think it would look kind of crazy because rightfully pointed out, there's a lot of European countries, most or all, I think require like voter IDs anyway. That's actually vote. a really good point. Speaking of national holidays, do you know what day it is today? Am I allowed to make your mom joke? Super Bowl! Yeah. Super Bowl Sunday! Let's go! Taylor Swift ruined the Oh, I Bowl. literally forgot it was Super Bowl. I'm not going to lie. I was going to Swift into something else. Another national holiday. Do you know what day it is today? Let me check my Google calendar. I don't know. It's the last day of your canvassing event. Oh, my God. That's a national Ooh. holiday? What? It will be soon. Oh, <laughs> when it's Super Bowl is like literally an international holiday. A national yes. holiday made international. It's like so dope. We're like, we're going to impress everybody in the world with our stupid sport that nobody else plays. That's it's true. Like, so wow. literally the worst sport. Sport. It's literally I, it's so I, cool. Any American sport American is better American than American football. Or American elections or? Super Bowl. Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah. Football. The su Fringe. superb owl. At least I'm, play rugby. At what? least. At least just be brave and no. play rugby. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God. We Am I wrong? The tactics are more interesting. You can only throw backwards. Sorry, Kyla. We have people who have literal brain damage because of our, our sports, and you think rugby that they're not. You think rugby doesn't have yeah. brain yeah, damage? They do. They're worse. They don't even have helmets. Yeah, they so don't even have padding. They just our, fucking our run into each other. To have more brain damage? Wait, hold on. Also, fact check. I'm pretty sure playing without helmets and everything means that you have to play safer and you don't have as much brain damage. True. It's like boxing with gloves. Do you have evidence yeah. for that? Well, you can look it up, but I know it's, just, I know it's true for boxing. You yeah, can yeah, get harder with boxing. boxing. The issue is that like what you're talking about in rugby is like high impact, so they don't like get knocked on I the head. I I'm like. making this up, but I seriously don't in rugby. They're crashing into each other the same way they do in an NFL football game. There's no yeah. way. Yeah, but you, you know don't what? Think that they're having so major neck portion that's going on. Ours is better. No. I, the brainstem neck torsion? The brainstem is super important for CTE development. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, isn't it true that if you wear a helmet, you're more likely to get the brain injuries? Hey, welcome to like two minutes ago on the conversation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> She's saying the opposite of you. You're wrong. Why? Because She's saying that the helmet, helmet makes you less careful of your head. Well, wait, I want to say... How does that, that when you wear the helmet, it makes... Wait, so no, because so it's not about the impact, it's about the movement of your brain. So if you do this, you can still get a fucking brain injury. That's crazy, because your mom was doing this last night. She didn't get brain injuries. Actually, she did. She's really mumbling now. Listen, I, I think it's awesome we got all these cool content creators here to come out and do the canvassing event. So thank you guys all for coming out. And it, it's a treat to see everybody together. Do we want to... Oh, can we pass the mic over there? Uh, so rates of uh, head injury for rugby players apparently oh. 50, 50 wow. percent, 68 for football. Because wait, 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 quick, 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 wait, football, wait, American football or the poor wait, football? Okay, yeah. No, it's American football. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I would never, I never made that confusion. I mean, you compare soccer to rugby, that's What do you mean? You see soccer, yeah, how the if the wind blows the wrong way, they're on the ground like, oh, no one's going to say, yeah, the shot. there's not a 68% chance. The real, the real there's not a 68% chance of head injury in this soccer. Yeah. Can people put their bodies on the line and sacrifice their lives for that sport? And, and you want us to make it worse for them? Yeah. I just want, uh, what's her name? Taylor Swift to win tonight, okay? True. That's all I want. I'm tired of the bitching about Taylor Swift. She's on for 25 seconds for a two hour game. Why do people care that much? It's not that big because of Because those 25 seconds are important. She really and it doesn't matter. And how dare you minimize women's time? Do you ever think about the fact that she's hot? Yeah. Yeah. That's why that 25 Swift seconds is very much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. It's very important. Oh, Steven, who are you rooting for in today's Super Bowl? You just wanted to fact check. You wanted to slide in, shit on me, and then just hand the mic back? Ah, I see. Calculated, you know? Interesting. Very interesting. So did it say nothing about brainstem injuries? I feel like a lot of people were It said nothing about brainstem injuries? I'm, I'm just it just said head, so probably rugby players get more face injuries, because obviously they have the cauliflower ears and shit. But isn't that the whole point with helmets, is that helmets only protect your skull. They don't protect your brain from bouncing well, around. They usually protect, yeah, they yeah. Just protect from like skull fractures and stuff like uh, that. They don't protect from the <gasps> bouncing around. Wait, was I wrong about yeah, that? There was a higher rate of injuries for football. No, 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 he was right. Wait, why? I thought he was. Oh, no. Just like for voter fraud. Oh. <laughs> No, it was correct. All right. They were wrong. Right, we're getting, getting the we signal, though. 68% for football, 50% for rugby. That means Which rugby means players, players get, get less. higher head, head injury rates. Yeah, so yeah. Wait, no, I was more. saying that they get more. Yes. Yeah. No, she, oh, she had it. You were there. Oh, they get more injuries. Yeah, you were against you. Yes. Oh. But you were fist pumping me, so I thought you were pumping my <laughs> <laughs> Lauren's just excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yay! 
real the real controversy here is that Kyla doesn't want uh, American football players to necessarily yeah, give her the play mic, play uh, play rugby. She just wants them to get more injured yeah. because she hates them. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. I hate athletes, but unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. That's where we have to end here. You'll have to tune in next time to find out my plan with athletes in the future. Excellent. Peace out, guys. Peace. Bye.